The Church of the Brethren in Nigeria, better identified as El Lysia Yanua in Nigeria, says it lost over 8,370 members to Boko Haram attacks in the Northeast. The EYN, currently with headquarters in Kwahi in Adamawa State, said at a world press conference in Yola that eight pastors were among the Boko Haram victims. EYN President Reverend Joel Billy, who read the text of the press conference at the EYN main branch in Jimeta, Yola, said EYN was the single Christian denomination worst hit by activities of the Boko Haram. He added that over 700,000 members have been displaced with only seven out of the 60 district church councils not directly affected by the insurgency. He appealed to the federal government and the governments of Adamawa, Burno, and Yobe states to rescue the remaining Chibok schoolgirls, as well as Leah Sharibu, Alice Loksha, and hundreds of others abducted by the Boko Haram. We are now being joined by Anslem Nuhu, a journalist based in Yola, Adamawa, to give us more insight on the press conference. Good afternoon, Anslem. Yeah, good day. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, the figures released by the Church of the Brethren is really disturbing. Could it be that these crises are underreported or journalists are simply not updated? Well, um, the reality on ground is that journalists here have done their best and are still doing the best they can in reporting the humanitarian crisis in the Northeast Nigeria. But I've been faced by, uh, sorry, I've been finished. I've been hampered by factors which are clear realities, one of which is the fact that um, at a point in time, those places where those towns are still full, practically deserted the areas, um, making the place inaccessible for journalists to actually go in there and access the crisis, and there, after report crisis, exactly as they happen. So that's one of the factors. And then the second factor is the fact that um, during the heat of the crisis, the military actually banned uh, everybody, including journalists, from visiting those areas to actually see things uh, for themselves. And if you look at these two uh, critical realities, you discover that there is just no how uh, a journalist is free to report exactly what's happening there. So basically, these are two major reasons why exact reportage of what happened and what is happening there uh, appears to be uh, very, very difficult. But by and large, journalists have been trying to do their job, and then, and then uh, it's a reality, actually, what the Church of the Brethren, in Hausa it is called Ecclesian Yenwa Na Nigeria, that's EYN. Uh, the figures we leave, actually, one cannot debunk that because a lot of things have happened here, a lot of damages, a lot of uh, lives have been lost here. Even as we talk, there are quite a number of people that are still uh, serving as refugees in Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. They are actually scared of coming back to their places because as we speak, there are still there are, there are still attacks going on on the ground in the areas. Okay, so now, so why let, the church in question uh, is yeah, coming up with this let, contract? Let's, is let's contract? also sorry sorry uh, to cut you there. Um, so let let me also ask: To what extent have uh, the governors of the three states in the northeast helped the church for soccer? Okay, you now number number one, um, this crisis actually started uh, when the present governors actually were not on seat. Because the governor of Yobe State, that of Borno State, and the one of Adama State were actually not the ones on seats yes. at the time of the heat of this crisis. But the ones that were on seats at the time of the crisis actually did their best, uh, translated into uh, the provision of uh, soccer in form of relief materials to the people. But the real security uh, was not really provided, it's so to say. But we've had cases where the military on their own have uh, been trying to engage the insurgents in counter-insurgency uh, struggle. But for the state government or state governors, uh, the efforts are not, uh, are not enough. Okay. Are not really enough. Now, now this, new, this new governors on seat, I, I am aware that so far they've held three different meetings on the same issue, bordering on security of the Northeast, part of the country. 
and then they are still having meetings actually so as to proffer solution to it. Okay, so now, now there's uh, also a few reports that seem to be coming from that end in uh, recent times. Is, is it, you know, logical to say that the attacks have reduced or that uh, the COVID-19 has also relegated the havoc being done by Boko Haram to the back seat? Okay, actually, um, the truth of the matter is um, one evil is bigger than the other, actually, bigger than the another, sorry. Um, we just wake up one day to discover that uh, there's something called COVID-19, yeah. which is uh, a threat to a law-abiding citizen of this country and as well uh, is a threat to the criminals who are perpetrating this act. So COVID-19 has actually, will I say, helped in reducing this rate of killings and attacks by Boko Haram people there because it, it, it's something that affects almost everybody. But by and large, there are still killings ongoing, but not at the rate at which they used to be. Actually, I can say it uh, without me few words that um, COVID-19 has actually helped in delving the crisis in the zone. Okay. We're talking about at this point. Okay, lastly, just before we uh, let you go, I, I want to know what the, the thoughts are like of the people in those regions um, as of now. You know, do they, you know, are they still demanding a lot more from the government um, with regard to security? Um, is there some things, you know, some of the emotions that you may want to quickly share before you go? Yeah, it's true, particularly now that we are um, uh, here in, in this part of the country, uh, we are in rainy season, and then... Um, People there mostly are farmers, and the concern here is they can actually not go to their farms to cultivate any crop for fear of the unknown. So it's a very, very serious issue here. And they are calling on the state government to actually come to their aid in, in terms of feeding. And even their houses that were ravaged years back are still yet not, nothing has been done about the houses at this point. So they only uh, create for themselves um, touch houses. And uh, some are still living in caves and rocks, just trying to manage life. But like I said, about 60 or 65 percent of people living in those areas are yet to return, actually, for this year. So as it is now, life there is not normal. That's just a true picture of uh, what's happening there. Okay. And they're actually calling on the government to, both state government and federal government, to come to their rescue. Okay. All right, we wish um, them well, and, and thank you very much uh, for joining us, uh, Anselm. We hope to speak with you again. Remember to stay safe. Thank you. You're welcome.